sorry, this is so, I am so Luke Skywalker right now. <laughs> My bad, probably. <laughs> Well, that was one of the most exhilarating things I've done today. Now, the point of this is obviously to arm drones with the ability to avoid stuff as they're delivering your groceries, avoid pigeons, people, and random fences. But on a larger level, we're also going to need to be able to coordinate drones as they go about their daily business. And that is what Kate Russell has been looking at. Los Angeles International Airport. Seventh busiest in the world. Last weekend, it handled a record 1.2 million passengers going home for Independence Day celebrations. But it's not just people and airplanes that air traffic control have to worry about. Last year, there were 39 near collisions between drones and jets here in LA, and almost 250 incidents recorded across the United States. Unmanned aircraft systems is um, something that we're all trying to wrap our arms around and there's um, technology out there, various platforms that we're entertaining and uh, it is difficult to understand exactly how we can get our arms around that um, activity, especially an airport as complex as Los Angeles International Airport. One system being trialled here links into official data streams and other useful information like weather forecasts so drone operators can fly more safely. Yep. So all you have to do is, is fire up either an AirMap app, a DJI app, or any other developer's app that has airspace information baked into it, and you can receive traffic alerts and know uh, what hazards might be in the area that you are flying in. As well as helping drone operators fly more safely, it's an opportunity for airports like LAX to know who's in their airspace. I got an exclusive look behind the scenes where they're testing the AirMap platform. You can clearly see the areas that have been graphed out um, that shows um, where operators are discouraged in flying. Um, the three representations up here, if you click on any one of them, will give you information such as altitude, um, numbers to call, um, who they are, when they made the request and uh, the, type of, uh, the type of device that they're actually flying. We can uh, quickly establish a dialogue with a drone operator and suggest that they bring down their drone or that there is a conflict of sorts. This system is currently only a pilot here at LAX, but it's clear that airports across the world are going to have to figure out how they manage air traffic control of drones as they become more and more common in the skies. As tough as it is now, the skies are only going to get busier. Just last month, the rules for lightweight commercial drones were relaxed in America, as the Federal Aviation Administration announced that operators can now freely fly drones during daylight hours at altitudes under 400 feet. NASA is best known for flinging very expensive rockets into space. But the first A in NASA stands for aeronautics, and it's been working with the FAA to bring order to the increasingly busy airways for 25 years. So, who better to be working on the problem of managing the traffic than a team of researchers here at NASA Ames? They're tasked with figuring out how to structure a broad platform that will let commercial and recreational drones play nicely together with existing air traffic stakeholders. Our work is all about safely enabling large-scale visual line of sight and beyond visual line of sight unmanned aircraft systems. Technologies on trial include live databases tracking and scheduling planned flights, dynamic geofencing so everyone knows where it's safe to fly, and sensors so drones don't crash into buildings, other aircraft or indeed each other. Largely there will be flexibility for operators where they want to go based on their business needs. Whether they are doing deliveries, whether they are doing infrastructure surveillance or search and rescue. All these technologies are still in their infancy, with a lot of lessons to be learned. Meanwhile, the drone market is just exploding, promising to double year on year in the short term at least. Whatever platform ends up being adopted, 
it'll have to be the ultimate exercise in rapid scaling to keep up with the demand.